Good afternoon, welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety Orca Triple XL, and today we have a row battle showdown between a previous gen 3070 Ti, a Supreme X, pretty much the best version of a 3070 Ti you could hope to have, versus our sleek and simple and actually kind of small 4070 Super. You'll see why I say that as we get into the build of the card. But first, we've got to start with what's in the box, and this you might notice comes with an ATX 3.0 adapter because the side pin over here is an ATX 3.0 which is completely over spec for 4070 Super. Uh, this is what a 200 watt TGP kind of card. I think that's what it's going to draw at most. So this setup is like I say overkill and that should be the is pretty much the precursor to this build from Palette and honestly the 4070 Super's performance because the generational improvements over here is much like a bully beat down. You couldn't really put a 4070 Ti against a 3070 Ti because the 4070 Ti is already over a 3090 in performance in general so it's a little bit overkill so this is more I would say of a generational improvement um, from one to the other. And the builds between these two cards are eerily similar, but the PCB on this one is like way shorter than it is on the 3070 Ti, which is very, very peculiar, I have to say. Uh, this has got like a tiny PCB. The entire PCB actually only comes up to the power area over there. It's about that big. Whereas on this side, it's way bigger. It's all the way out here. And I've actually got a side-by-side -side comparison on that. So you can see where the power connectors sit. That's actually where the PCB ends for each GPU. So the PCB on the 4070 Super is minute in comparison. And so this is like seemingly a lot more cooling than it actually really needs. And it, it really is. The fans on this basically don't need to turn. And it keeps it at like a cool calm and collected 64 degrees. Whereas the 3070 Ti draws quite a lot more wattage and gets a little bit more out of control. Um, on that on that end and in general looking around the physical setup of these two cards the coolers and stuff are very comparable in size albeit the MSI is quite a bit heavier because it's got a lot more metal going on in it whereas the palette's a lot more sleek and simple and no RGB it's just a default good straightforward sort of build is what they've gone for and yeah, particularly overkill for the amount of wattage that this guy draws. Like I said, it's about 200 watts is what it's going to draw at peak, whereas this is like 320. So you needed a lot more cooling. It's 120 watts more. And bearing in mind as we go into the benchmarks, which we are going to rush into, because that is the focus over here. The, the, the performance difference between these two is it's very much a one-sided bully beat done, especially where ray tracing is considered. So the test bench, what are we testing it with? We have a 13600K with 5200 MHz CL38 memory over there. So it's a DDR5 build with a 2TB NVMe on our Z690 torpedo with an 850-watt PM850D uh, power supply from Deepcore, 850-watt gold, 80-plus gold. So more than enough power delivery for each of these GPUs. Use. I've actually run a 48 year of this absolutely no problem so there's no problems with the power throughput and not really any bottleneck 13600Ks are still very good even at the default 5.1 which is exactly what we ran this at I wanted to do to eliminate sort of CPU gains from the tests and rather just focus on what the individual GPUs will do trying to keep that CPU scores close to one another now it's very hot in South Africa at the moment we've been going through a heat wave and I've been testing these through a heat wave so ambient temperatures you could say have been in the region of 28 to 32 degrees Celsius which is very high so they are luckily they're on an open air test bench which does help that situation considerably but you know it's still a bit warm anyway Let's get into those benchmarks. So starting off with Fire Strike, we see the first bully beat down where normal rasterizing performance is considered. You're going to be looking at getting as much as 40% improvement from one to the other. And it's going to continue like that into Time Spa. And Speedway, the DirectX 12 DLSS or ray tracing test now, that's from there, which does in fact end DLSS. It's just with general 
uh, like RT core performance test, it's still going to give you like a 30% bully beat down performance. So disgusting generational gains. And especially with the higher resolution stuff, we noticed that gap getting a little bit wider, like with Fire Strike Extreme. And that's just due to there just being more video memory. So on higher resolutions, having more VRAM means it needs to clear that VRAM out and add stuff back in texture wise less often. So it's just going to increase the performance. Now, for the gaming benchmarks, which we did on 1440p, if we look at general rasterizing stuff, something like Dota, you're not really going to see a performance difference. It's very locked to your CPU performance. But when you look at Vermintide 2, things start to get a little bit noticeable as far as rasterizing performance goes. I mean, I think there was like a 30% differential over there, but it's quite a gap. And then as we move into DLSS tests, things start to get absolutely ludicrous where we consider the performance of games with DLSS 3, especially RDR2, where we saw an 80% gain. It went from being like, okay, this is pretty nice and playable, to it's eSports ready RDR2-ing. That's 127 av average FPS across that benchmark. That's no mean feat from the 4070 Super. So we're seeing a huge generational uplift. When the 3070 Ti came out, we were in a GPU crisis, but the price points were, uh, would have been quite similar. I mean, there was a surcharge for it because of the demand, but this would have launched at about 14, 15,000 Rand. And entry level versions of this launch at about the same price. The overkill cooling and stuff that you have on the palette is really, really nice to have from a fan and a temperature uh, perspective. The one thing that was very interesting with this is how much more pass-through cooling it has. So just be careful with that in your system. If you are then feeding that upward into your water cooler, it could become a bit of an issue and it could be adding in a lot of heat. So into that sort of loop, if you don't have your loop up front on the intake, then you've instead got a top mounted, which honestly in general is a bit better. All things considered, you could do a pull from the top and then push out the front, but you know, I don't think you're gonna really do that. So there is a lot of pass through cooling on this card in particular. So for the pallet edition of this 4070 Super, that's about the only thing. I don't know if I would have them change it at all, because I think if you have a really big case that you're going to need to fit all of that GB, I mean, there's things like a ruler in length, it's 30 something, it's probably like 30 something centimeters being comparable to this guy over here. So yes, <laughs> it's a foot, it's a foot worth of GPU if you're an American watching this review. Yes, we still, I, I'm familiar with your measuring sizes. And so yeah, you're not gonna exactly put this and shove it into a micro ATX case, are you? But yeah, the, the generational performance improvement. It was kind of staggering. It was a very one-sided bully beatdown. I wasn't expecting that much. I thought it'd be 20, 25% on average was what I was gonna see. But yeah, with DLSS is concerned. Oh my giddy aunt. I tested them on the balance modes as well, as you can see by the titles over there. Quality is setting is the general, uh, uh, consensus of the best setting for DLSS 3.0, but on 1440p on a balance, you get absolutely no visual degradation, even with the 30 series. So it felt like the best way to make sure that we got the best performance out of both of the GPUs to see what they could actually push. Um, and like I said, no bottleneck with a 13600K. So yeah, pretty much a one sided bully beat down in a price versus performance consideration at launch, which we are only, what, two weeks over on the 47 Super launch date, and no 14,000 Rand on the EVTEC store. As I said, for an entry-level version of these, there's a couple of uh, different ones from MSI as well on the store. So if you want something with fancy flashing lights and a bigger, thicker stack of a cooler, you can get that. And I did test it versus my system, which has a 4070 in it as well, with a 5900X, which is a bit older. It's not quite the same single core performance. But even if you had to take out, say, 5 or 10% from that one fire strike run, it's still like giving 10% over the normal 4070. So, yeah, it's a beefy boy. It's very, very stacked. Uh, it's got a lot of cool cores, and they've improved a significant amount of the efficiency, which is a big plus, so that it can keep that 60 degree odd temperature, even in these flipping South African heat waves. Anywho, <laughs> that is all I have for you. While I'm standing here sweating in front of this camera on the, the 3070 Ti and the 4070 Super. If you have enjoyed this, please hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side. Color, white, color, white, color, white.